In this video, we will be going over the ACCRINT and the ACCRINTM functions in Excel. Uh, when you purchase a security that pays interest, uh, you can receive your interest payments either periodically or all at once. Or you can receive uh, the interest payments once the security reaches its maturity. Excel uses the ACCRINT function and uh, it allows you to find the accrued interest that is paid periodically. The ACCRINTM function allows you to find the accrued interest that is paid in a lump sum once the security comes to maturity. The only difference between these two is the M, which is at the end for the acronym TIM, at the end, which stands for maturity. That's the easiest way to remember these two. The M at the end stands for at maturity. So first, we will go over the a crint function and calculate the interest that is paid periodically. And then we will go over the ACCRINTM function to calculate how interest is paid at maturity. Okay, so we have labeled all the data that we need in order to calculate the accrued interest that is paid periodically. And starting from here, we First, we have the issue date, which is the date the security is first issued and not bought. Um, second, we have the first interest date, and that is the date on which it first, or the investment first pays interest to its investors. The settlement date is the date on which you actually purchased the security. The annual rate, pretty self-explanatory, is the annual interest that is paid by the security. The par value is the face value of your, of your investment. The frequency is the number of payments per year. Um, and this value can be set to either one for annual, two for semi-annual, or four for quarterly. These are the three different methods you can configure it for Excel to be able to read it. Um, in this scenario, we obviously have it set to quarterly. Uh, next, we have basis, and the basis is the number of days in a month and in a year. Um, for example, some accounting firms use 30-day months and assume a standard 360-day accounting year. Um, some use actual days, uh, but for this value, for the purpose of this uh, demonstration, we leave it as zero. And lastly, we have our calculation method. Uh, we can either set this to true or to false. If we set this to true, Excel will start calculating interest from the issue date to the settlement date. And if this is set to false, it will calculate the interest from the settlement date to the first interest date. And in majority of cases, this value will always be set to true. So let's dig in and calculate our periodic quarterly accrued interest. So we will start by typing in equals A-C-C-R-I-N-T. And it, as you can see, it brings it up. So we're just going to go ahead and double click it. And you can see here how Excel just drops down all the values that it needs in order to calculate it. So first, we're going to start with the issue date, which we have here followed by a comma. Next, we have the first interest date, which is right here. After that, we have the settlement date, followed by a comma. Next, we have the annual rate, comma. Then we have the par value, comma. The frequency, comma. The basis, and you can see here the drop-down methods that uh, come through for you just depends on how the accounting year or days is done for your particular firm or for your particular method. So for this one, we're just gonna leave it as zero. And then the calculation method, which we have set to true. So after you have inputted all those values in, you're gonna close the parentheses and click enter. So you can see that your periodic monthly or your periodic quarterly payments would come out to $58.33. Say for example, we alter the interest rate via a higher interest rate. You can see how your periodic payments would change. 
or any other value that you wanted to tinker with here. So for example, if you change the par value to something higher, boom, you can see how your accrued interest would change periodically. Next, we're gonna move on to calculating the uh, accrued interest at maturity. Okay, so now we are gonna be calculating interest at maturity. As you can see, the calculation for uh, interest at maturity is much simpler, and that's because we only need to know the interest that has accumulated throughout the life of our investment. So uh, we will start this, and it's actually really, really easy to calculate. So we're gonna start with equals ACC, and once this populates, we're gonna go ahead and select the one with the M at the end. You can just go ahead and double click it. And then we just start filling it in. So our issue date is here. Our settlement date is here. Our rate, our par value, and our basis. So these pretty much are the same as the inputs from uh, our previous example, but they're just calculated on a at maturity basis. So once we have all of our inputs in, click select. So interest at maturity, it comes out to $1,400, and it's pretty easy to see how. So this is investment duration is two years at 7%, and it would come out to $700 per year. And our total accrued interest at maturity is $1,400. So if we wanted to see what it would look like for an 8% interest rate, we can just go ahead and input that in, and you guys can see how the investment changes. If we wanted to maybe stretch this out another year, we can see how that would also change. If you wanted to maybe change the par value, get an idea of how that would change the interest at maturity, you can go ahead and input that in. Alrighty, and that's it for calculating periodic interest and interest at maturity.